What's up guys? Back with another educational video and this week we're talking about sugar. I've kind of had a little bit of an ongoing feud with a guy named uh, Dr. Tro on Twitter who kind of routinely mischaracterizes my position on various things. The good news is we're actually having a debate. I'll put the information about the debate in the description and uh, we're taking donations to charities. We're sending it to our favorite charities. So I've chosen Autism Speaks. If you guys support this debate, please go click the link in the description and donate. Every little bit helps and at least we can discuss science for a good cause. This guy quoted, sugar doesn't cause disease and attributed that quote to myself and another guy named Kevin Bass on Twitter. And he cited a study that was titled, fructose stimulated de novo lipogenesis is promoted by inflammation. I'm trying to be nice. This is a prime example as why it's very important not to just read what somebody writes and when they cite a study, but actually go look at the study and say, hmm, does that study actually support what they are claiming it supports? So the study was done in mice, which, hey, I did rodent research as part of my PhD, so there's, there's nothing wrong with that. They're a relatively good model for glycemic control. However, this study showed that these mice developed a fatty liver uh, due to de novo lipogenesis when they were fed 60% of calories from fructose. I'm gonna say it one more time. 60% of total calories from fructose. If you drink nothing but soda, which is high fructose corn syrup, you would not reach 60% of calories from fructose. High fructose corn syrup is 55% Fructose, 45% glucose on average. So this is an unphysiological study. So they fed them 60% of total calories from fructose uh, and they provided them with free access to an approximately 30% solution of fructose on top of that. And they saw that they developed uh, fatty liver and some other weird morbidities, which doesn't surprise me. There was another group that was drinking a 30% sucrose solution, which by the way, sucrose actually is what we call sugar. And that group did not have many of the negative outcomes as the fructose group. So what does this actually mean? Uh, it actually means if you're a mouse that's getting basically the majority of your diet from pure fructose, you might be concerned. If you're a human being, eating fructose as part of fruit or even a small amount of high fructose corn syrup, I would not be very worried, especially if you are in energy balance or an energy deficit and for a few reasons. So there are several randomized control trials that show that when calories are equated and macros are equated, high sugar versus low sugar doesn't cause differences in fat loss that both groups in an energy deficit will lose the same amount of fat. Additionally, there was a recent study where they fed human beings 150 grams of fructose per day on top of their normal diet, but kept them at energy balance. I believe it was over 12 weeks and they didn't see any increase in liver fat. They actually didn't really see anything weird at all. Now I want to put that in perspective, 150 grams of fructose. I believe a Coke has 40 total grams of high fructose corn syrup. So 55% of that would be about 22 grams of fructose. So you're talking about around seven Cokes per day. Now, are there people out there who probably hit that? Yeah. Should they be concerned? Yes. But more so the fact that they're probably overeating total calories because you're not just getting the fructose, you're also getting the glucose. So you're getting about, you'd be getting about 1200 calories just from uh, sugar, which is not a good idea. And the other thing is a lot of these people straw man my argument. I'll say this and what they hear or what they repeat is Lane is saying you should eat sugar. No, I think eating a high sugar diet, if the goal is weight loss, is probably a pretty poor idea because sugar is not very satiating. And some people have a lot of difficulty limiting their consumption of it. But if you can control your calories while eating sugar, is there evidence that sugar is an inherent lipogenic substrate compared to other non-fibrous carbohydrate? No. 
Again, this is why it's very important not just to read the title of a study or even the abstract of a study. It's very important to go through the study and critically evaluate, does this study support what this person is saying? And in the case of something like, for example, documentaries like What the Health, uh, an independent uh, scientific journal, I believe, reviewed the references and found that 96% of them were inaccurately cited meaning they didn't actually show what the video claimed they showed. In Holly and I's critique of the Game Changers, there were some references that certainly didn't show what was implied, and there were other references that were blatantly misrepresented. Again, just because somebody says a study exists that shows X, Y, Z does not make it so. You can claim anything you want, please go and at least read the abstract of the study. That is why <laughs> I am actually starting a research review through my website, biolane.com. It'll be available to members, should be coming out here in a few months, and we're gonna break down five studies every month that are relevant to the field of fitness and nutrition and give you guys kind of practical takeaways from those studies as well as critically evaluate them. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Once again, please don't jump to conclusions based off the title of a study. Don't use it to like spike a football. Go through, read, critically evaluate, and then think. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. Links to buy my stuff are in the description. And please tune in for the debate and donate to a charity. We really appreciate your support, and it should be a lot of fun.